The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, X Zone Nation. Wow, that first hour was kind of a. Oh, when Technic, you know, like this is the difference between what we used to do and what we do now. When we were doing live radio at CKTB and other stations across Canada, it was very simple. You know, you had about three or four producers and everything was live. And if there was a, we used, we had things called carts and these were little cassette, uh, like eight tracks. And you had all these machines in front of you, one, two, three, four, and you had all the carts lined up. So all you would do is you take a cart, for example, aliens and Bob, all you do is you take the cart that says alien and Bob and you slide it into the cart machine and live well out would play. But here with modern technology and all the wonders of digital miracles, I guess, when you hit a button and it doesn't play, it's like, uh-oh. Then we've got a producer and an engineer scurrying around looking for what has happened until we finally get the song. So we apologize to, uh, to our good friend Charlie Rumba and his followers around the world for not getting that song when we did but you know what we did get it and we did play it and it's a great song and i can't wait until charlie rumba comes out with more songs so that we can play them here as we did tonight aliens and bob wow from aliens to a swami that's right this hour we have a uh, swami who's going to be joining us his name is swami tirtha and he is a mystical channel and a healer, born psychic, medium, healer, and shaman. Joining us now from parts unknown is the Swami himself. Hey, Swami, how are you tonight? Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me on the show. You know, Swami, I've been doing this show for 33 years. And Good you, man. sir, are the very first Swami we've ever had on the show. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, I must. Uh, I must ask you, uh, what's with the Orange Cowboy website when you're a Swami? Yeah, well, you know, uh, Krishna was a cowboy, wasn't he? He co he, he herded the the cows, and I wore the hat because it kept the sun out of my eyes. And <laughs> people started calling me the Orange Cowboy, and they loved it. They laughed. Yeah. And I said, "Okay, well, make people happy." <laughs> well, first time Swami, dressed in orange. You know, I figure if the Beatles can have a yellow submarine, we can have an orange Swami here. There you go. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, Swami. Sure. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, started off uh, my life in an unusual place back in the 60s. Well, when the Beatles were in India meditating, that was all right. we knew about meditation, yoga. We didn't have yoga on every corner. And uh, we had no discussion of ETs that I knew about. Um, yeah psychics mediums none of that was in our vocabulary uh but then i started to have some strange dreams at night that uh, i'd be separated from my parents i'd have multiple parents and oh. this was a recurring dream for probably 10 years and closer to the 10th year it was around the um, vietnam war and so my dream changed and now in my dream i was the soldier coming home from war and my parents moved and didn't tell me where they moved. Very disturbing. <laughs> then I started uh, driver's education and I started having dreams. I'd step on the gas and the car would stop. And my father checked the brakes on his car and all that. Now, one day we're in the car real life and uh, we're at a T intersection. Mm -hmm. And across the street from us is a funeral home. And I'm looking up at the funeral home and all of a sudden my whole vision swirls black. And I just start crying. I don't want you to die. I don't want you to die. And oh my God. When I could see again, they turn back and they're looking at me. My parents go, What are you talking about? And within a year, they were in a car crash and they passed on. And we had oh multiple my good Lord. parents, multiple parents, multiple couples looking out for my brother and myself. So this stuff that is such a beautiful gift um, 
helping people at that time was not a gift at all for me. And um, after the grief, after the grieving process, I said, I got to figure out what this is because it's not possible. You know, it does. It's, you know, cynical. Mm -hmm. We laughed at people who meditated and uh, the whole country more or less did basically. So I really just, uh, I was in the radio and TV film myself, uh, college times, and I just put it all aside and said, I got to get into this. And I just finished a college at a meditation college, became a meditation teacher. And um, it's, it's, it's been back and forth. God's been pushing me into the mainstream and then back to the meditation world and yeah. mainstream and spiritual world. And so that's how it all kind of started. My goodness. Have you ever had an encounter with an ET? I had actually uh, going to high school one day. I was yeah. walking through some little bit of forest and I, I just looked up at the gray sky and in the, there was a grayer silhouette of a spaceship mm -hmm. sitting on top of the trees. And I, I think there was like a, a like a bubble a second where I just sort of like popped back into my awareness looking at the the at the spaceship and I go, huh, oh, okay. Well <laughs> and I walked to school. But then I started drawing this picture of what mm -hmm. I now know is that that very famous alien face, you know, that all the right. eyes and all that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, if you remember in art class, they used to tell us, you know, if you want to draw a horse, see the horse in your mind and draw it. Right. Exactly. I could never see anything in my head, but I saw this alien face and I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was an alien face. And I had a name for it. And mm -hmm. and only over the decades when I started, I saw somebody else say, here's an alien ship in a silhouette of a gray. It was exactly what I saw. And when I saw that face, and little by little, it started to dawn on me. Mm -hmm. I had an encounter, and I have a feeling that that second of, was probably a second in my time, but it was, I think, a lot longer, and I think it was up in that ship somehow. I, I, I am grateful that we're all able to talk about these topics openly these days. Yeah. And because, as I was saying earlier, so many people have had these experiences encounters premonitions psychic experiences and they didn't want to talk about it because they felt as if they were going to be scorned by society their family and friends yeah but now because of people like yourself the work you do uh the people that you meet the hearts that you touch yeah people are able to to be themselves and they're able to tell their stories share their stories and by doing this i believe that more and more people are going to be able to help solve the puzzle that we all have in front of us. And, and I used to use the analogy that each and every one of us has a piece of this jigsaw puzzle in our pocket. And if we were all to come to the table and work on this puzzle together, we'd solve it. I believe and, 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 you know, I think the time is now where the, a lot of these puzzles are going to be solved. Thanks to quantum, uh, the quantum sciences that are starting to open up the the universes right. to places that we've never had before, and of course, some members of the media, the the people at Star Trek, Gene Roddenberry, look what right. he did, right. you know. And so, I really believe the time is now. What is your opinion, Swami? Yeah, you know, twenty twelve. You remember that was the moment. Sure that, do. So in twenty ten, January first, I woke up. New Year's Day, and just to a dream, another vision. Mm -hmm. I was in an elevator, the doors open. I was in Eden, and on either side of the elevator doors were the angels singing 2010 is 2012. And I wrote a song about it, and basically, it's already started. That was the message of that song, of that vision. And um, we're in, they said that it's the age of celebration, the age of joy. And in the when in actually 2012 i was in guatemala and i was invited to a mayan celebration for the winter solstice and the mayan shaman said all these um white people are saying it's the end of the world the mayan calendar <laughs> is the end of the world he says but nobody's asked the mayans what they think about that's it. right <laughs> yeah uh, my, my wife and i my wife and i went down uh to uh to Mexico and uh, through Central America. And we were talking to the Mayans and we were introduced to a Mayan prince and a Mayan elder. Wow. 
And I said to him, what is the Mayan calendar all about? What is 2012 all about? And he looked at me and he put a smile on his face and he said, well, in your house on December 31st, you take the calendar off the fridge and put the new one up after midnight. I said, yeah. He said, well, that's all we're doing is we're putting up a new calendar. And I said, well, where did the myth and the misconception come from that it's the end of the world? He said, the media. Yeah. They jumped on it. Yeah. It's a way to sell product. Just, and I'm saying, oh, my Lord. They are such a nice people. They, are. they have such an insight. And they're one example of ancient wisdom that has been lost. Yeah. yeah. So tell me, Swami, how did you get started with the metaphysical world? Was it because of the experiences that you had as a child or did something else happen? Well, that, that was really, that was really it. That was the, uh, yeah, that was just, you know, like the, uh, the analogy of a, in the pine forest when the, the pine cones mm -hmm. have the seeds, but they won't, get born and grow into trees unless the parent trees burn and the heat releases the seed from the, the pine cone and uh that pretty much summed it up and i just devoted my whole life but along the way though mm -hmm. uh, i i had this i was i was where i was back working in television again in new york city and one of the networks and every winter i'd get the flu and it was miserable and cold and i'd go to the health food stores looking for things that try out mm -hmm. one year i found ayurvedic medicine and i had the flu and i took this little stuff and i drank it and my body sort of i didn't know it was tilted but it just straightened up and mm -hmm. i didn't have the flu anymore i said whoa, whoa. It, it, the flu isn't something from outside of me it was some imbalance i gotta learn more about this <laughs> yeah i guess and so i studied ayurveda i became an ayurvedic uh, certified practitioner eventually started my own school for for our Vedic uh, practitioners, Vedic astrology. These are things that really touched me. I must uh, figure I had a past life or multiple past lives in, wow. in India. So it just, I, there are different layers of mysticism, of healing, of whatnot. You know, I went to the Amazon rainforest you know, around 2015, and uh, we lived with the shamans in the, in the Amazon rainforest. And they said to me, oh, based on your experiences, uh, you, you from the ayahuasca, from the Natem, they don't like the word ayahuasca, because that's what the Spanish derogatory word of. Oh, was it? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, they called it the devil's weed, and that's what I did. So they like the word Natem, but nobody knows that, so I figure I'd say ayahuasca. Swami, so say, I hate to do this to you, my friend, but I've got to sure. take a quick break. We'll be right back in Exonation. If you'd like to contact the Swami visit his website, orangecowboy.com. And we'll both be back on the other side as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Swami Tirth is our guest, and we shall both return with more. And in fact, when we come back, I'm going to ask the Swami not only to tell us about his time in the Amazon, but also his time living in the Himalayas. We'll be back. Don't go away.
And welcome back, everyone. Swam Meet Earth is our special guest. His website is orangecowboy.com. All right, so please continue about the 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 Amazon adventure that you've had. Sure. Living Rob. with the shamans. Yeah, so we, we saw different shamans. One of them blew uh, alcohol and fire at us to purify us. And he looked at a candle and read re each person. And for me, he said, you're a natural-born shaman. And then we went into the actual rainforest and we did the, uh, the herbal, not, not Tim and had dreams that night and shared them the next day. And he said, for me, that means you're a natural born shaman and a healer. And that was just pretty cool for me. It was a good validation of what I yeah. felt, but didn't, you know, didn't know for sure. Did, did you actually partake with uh, ayahuasca? Yes. Yeah. How was that? Uh, we, we hear stories of people getting violently ill after taking it. And then. Yeah, well, uh, everybody eventually threw up. But uh, the way the way <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did. It took me forever to throw up. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> but they, the way the way it was presented to us somewhere along the way was it's a poison. It'll kill you if you don't throw up. And right. Um, some people were wailing and crying all night long. I had to go back and. A lot of the guys had to get a second dose because it was quite mild. It's they they explained it to us. It's the feminine version of peyote, so the male version peyote would be much stronger of an influence supposedly. Mm. Uh, so, what did so, you experience so after ingesting this wonderful love potion? I I, I don't remember too much uh, other than like I saw it seeing colorful snakes, but my my. We, we were staying in tents outside yeah. and we had partners and my partner said to me, you kept going out and helping everybody who was sick. You'd hold their, their toilet paper, you'd hold their flashlights. So I was like helping everybody all night. I, I sort of knew I always did that. But somewhere in the middle of the night, I just got up and said, okay, it's time to get rid of this stuff. I've had enough of it. And I just spit it out or vomited wow. it out. Um, so would you suggest this as a as a way that people could experience the inner vision and quest that they seek? Well, certainly it's a way. Um, yeah. There, one of the gals in our group afterwards, she went to um, John Perkins. He, um, if you've heard of him, he's the one who sort of put this whole group together. Yeah. Uh, he did a, he wrote a book. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but basically how the CIA is doing all this economic the economic hitman i think is the name of the book and uh, he's a shaman american shaman teacher in florida mm -hmm. and he does uh shamanic journeys and she went to him afterwards and she said she got the same experience in the journey that she got from the not temp but without having to ingest it oh, so there you go. there's there's a couple of ways to do it yeah is meditation one way Meditation is, I think, a, a gradual way. It's more natural in the sense that it develops over time, and I, I and I think that it's it wouldn't necessarily would not it's it's not an either or is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I think meditation is a great thing for anybody, whether you're an athlete or or a swami, you know, uh, or anybody in between, uh, a, a piano player, and you know, just clear your mind, calm your mind, help find yourself. I, I think in the 60s, uh, when meditation and yoga became very popular yeah. to the West, that the uh, the lotus flower position was <laughs> the way to meditate. Right, and, I, right. and, I, and, I, and I think that that turned a lot of people off of meditation. Right, the pretzel position. Yeah, the pretzel <laughs> position. You know? yeah, there goes the, oh, yeah, grandma had a hip surgery and she wants to do meditation. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Call nine one one now, because in about thirty minutes we're going to need them. Um, but how does one? I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I was, I was just I was going just to ask. To... <laughs> sorry, I'll, I'll listen. <laughs> I will listen. You're the guest. You go ahead. I think we're. We're. I was going to follow up on what you're saying. There's this misconception that the way to meditate is sitting straight, not moving, cross-legged, and that's a way, but serving people being in service to people is another way you know people are police firemen yeah. uh, soldiers 
they serve people. They, and then there's also active, you know, other active meditations. And and one of the things that I do learn to do, discovered or was shown is how to do real time healings. Like so, for example, somebody would come to me in the past. We'd sit down and I talk to them, give them some herbs, give them some food recommendations. And they go out in the world and then they work with it. But there are people who you, I find if you're going to grow in life, you have to t become active. You can't just sit. Yeah. And so I was shown how to do uh, something I call instant energy healing through the heart. So uh, you're stressed at work and the people are yelling at you. The people are. Mm -hmm. And you just sort of put your hand on your heart. You, you kind of say a prayer for the best for that moment. You take a breath and it goes away. And there's, there's research that just touching your heart Touch helps heart. you calm okay. down. And so I try to help people. I show people in real time, I'm not sitting in the office, but mm -hmm. somebody who has uh, a problem holding their bowels while they're out in the world because of anxiety. Right. I go out with them and work with their thought patterns. And then they're out there and it's happening. They're not having that problem anymore. Excellent. So real time, I think, is is perhaps the most important of them all because it's it's the final test i have a cardiologist uh, here in uh, hamilton his name is dr S sullivan and whenever he's talking to you he has his hand on your heart wow and it, it is and uh, i i'm very blessed to have him as a cardiologist uh, and and as a friend and i asked him once i said why do you put your hand on my heart he says, because I want to connect. Beautiful. Yeah, I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. It's it's wonderful. What and are so some of the other what are some of the you connect yeah, with that's, yourself? Yeah, I yeah. So all you have to do is I don't know if you can see me, but I'm putting my hand on my heart. Right. And all I need to do is say a prayer or a mantra. What is the thing you most want to address right now? You know, this is the exercise, so I'll do it with you. Okay. Think of the thing you most, so maybe it's a health issue, a physical health, a mental mm -hmm. health. Maybe it's a relationship issue. Right. And you say, whatever term you use, God, spirit, angel, thank you for already making this happen for the highest good of all. And then I would also have people, I'd rate, have them rate their level from 10 to the worst stress they're going through to one. A mild stress and after that one session their points drop down and we'll go through it a few times i can feel it yeah i can and really can, feel it and you could do that and people don't know you're doing it you could sit in the yeah. boardroom and do that people could be yelling and you just say thank you god you so you're you're grateful it's already happened that's the part of it and You've cleared yourself out. You go on. Thank you for that, Swami. My pleasure, Rob. S Swami, um, my producer is asking me to ask you a question. What does the title Swami mean? Yeah, Swami is just a Sanskrit Hindu word for monk. That's it? Yeah. yeah. So you <laughs> a monk. That's it. I, I think Swami is a real cool name. Yeah, well, I it, took the name uh, to honor my guru. He made me a swami. So you've you've lived in the Himalayas. You, you've, you've let me see. You you were in yeah. the Amazon. You were in the Himalayas. What was it like in the Himalayas? Uh, you know, it seems so mystical in the yeah. Himalayas. It is in every way. I mean, the pine cones are like uh, two feet. Tall, my gosh tree, you know you feel like you really are a part of nature it, it you you don't feel like you command it and control it and uh, the steps of the rice fields the beauty the visuals the Himala the their himalayan mountains ranges mm -hmm. they call them hills oh those are the hills because hills. <laughs> you have the really big mountains like like mount everest right <laughs> so was this in tibet this was uh in or india Nepal? India this was in India still. Uh, you go from Rishikesh where the Beatles were. You go right. up north from there. And how long were you there? 
I was I was there for a little bit of time every year for probably about ten or so years. And Visit. and while you were there, what did you learn? What did you experience? And 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 how did it make you? How did it make you feel? Did you feel whole? Did you feel enlightened? I felt like uh, a little bit like I was whole, not completely, but I felt like I was returning to some place comfortable. And I really went to visit and spend time with my guru, my Swami, every year. Mm. And the funny thing is, when I, when you leave and you start driving down the mountain, right? All of a sudden, it's like the sun is getting is like going down. You didn't know you were in this basking sun, warm, of my guru right and as you start to go further away you realize oh wow i just was somewhere special that's probably the best experience i could share about that swami we have to take our next break please stand by thank you very much for taking time to visit with us tonight swami thank you rob appreciate it exonation swami uh tiratha is our special guest and uh, if you'd like to find out more about swami maybe you'd like to contact him his website is orangecowboy.com. This is The Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Don't forget, you can listen to us 724-365 on your radio, on any streaming service that you have, just by going to www.xzbn.net. We'll be back. Don't go away. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night, I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. SIMULTV.com. And welcome back, everyone. Swami Tirtha is our special guest, orangecowboy.com. Uh, Swami, how many books have you written? Oh, I think I've written about five books, five, six books and, right now. Yeah. And in your opinion, sir, which book that you have written has touched or helped so many people, the most people? I, I'd say in terms of help, I'd, I'd go by pure numbers, the my... The first book I wrote, the Ayurveda Encyclopedia, it's about 700 pages, full-size book, full-size wow. page. It's about 30,000 copies, uh, number one bestseller on Amazon for many years. So that was quite a, a, a surprise, a, a happy surprise for me. Now, you're a psychic, you're a healer, you're a channel. Yeah. Um, how, do you, how do you hone your skills? I, I I more and more try and listen to what I'm called to do more and more try and do what the flow is happening instead of resisting it. That's the, that's the, the simple answer. It's not simple to do, but it's a simple mm -hmm. answer. Eating healthy foods, meditating, staying in nature, connecting more with people and practicing. In, in your opinion, can anyone be a psychic or a healer? I believe I believe we're all psychic. You know, you've heard of mother's intuition, mm -hmm. and certainly fathers, I believe, have that too. I think most people, maybe may, maybe they don't use it, but you may have like a a great musician. You know, they just have a gift. 
very right. intuitive. They play songs and everybody loves them. So that to me is uh, psychic, intuitive. Oh. Yeah. How did you become professionally involved with psychic mediumship? Well, it's, it's a similar story in a, in a sense to the one about the funeral home and my parents. Right, yeah. I was out in my yard and I saw that the fattest bird on my uh, fence post I pulled out binoculars and it was an owl in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. And owls in the back of my mind, I said, oh, they, they're symbolic of death and metaphysics. And, and a few days later on the internet, there was a show called Somebody the Psychic. And I had never really known much about the psychic, so media, psychic medium. And I was watching the show and I was brought to tear how, tears how this person would contact people from above and parent, people who have passed on and tell these people about it. And these people would be healed that they missed their parents or yeah. um, they, they got closure. And as I was in tears, that same, suddenly that black circle happened again for me, the same one that told me my parents were dying. And then I heard the same voice and it said, now you can go deeper into your mediumship. And I said, whoa, okay. And I knew a lot of psychics and mediums. And a, the, a lot of them studied at a Lilydale Assembly in yes. upstate New York. Yeah. And so I went out there and I had the great fortune of studying with a number of TV psychic mediums. Lisa Williams, Tony Stockwell from England, and Janet Nohavec, who recently passed. I don't know if you maybe you've interviewed her over the years. And so studied with them took a group group how to how to give readings to groups as opposed and also how to give them to one-on-one oh i'll tell you a story that's really cool there my first time in lilydale you go to their church assembly and it's outdoors in the forest and what they do is the the registered mediums get up and read the people in the audience and one of them so I'm sitting there and I'm starting to feel very agitated. I can't sit in the chair properly on the bench. And my attention is taken away from everything. And I, suddenly I hear you in the orange cowboy hat. Would you like a reading? And that was me. And, the, and I go, yeah. She says, you have this giant angel behind you. And, you say, and they said that when you were young, you drowned twice. And both times you went to heaven. And both times you brought light back to the earth. And then she went on and, and my friend says, did that happen? I go, I'm trying to remember. And all of a sudden I did. I fell into two pools, two above ground pools as a kid and suddenly just popped out. Not that, you know, not that the ambulance came or anything like that. And I was so lit up from that realization that something real happened in my life. I used to go around as a kid moping. Nothing ever happens to me. But I think what I meant was, why don't I ever have a connection to spirit? Right. And once I realized that, people said to me, you're like a whole different person. You look so different. I was so alive. So I just thought of that. I haven't thought of that in a couple of years now. What's it like being able to communicate with the other side and bring closure to people who miss that final opportunity to say goodbye, I love you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes there, there was one gal, she was so insistent. What did my husband say to me in the hospital the last day before he died? And I and I heard, he says, I love you. And I told her that and she, she broke down in tears. She goes, yes, that's right, thank you. Mm. And uh, it's so rewarding. It's like like every, every, the more you can, whatever you do, when people right. are truly touched, it, it's, it makes life, you know, everything you do so worthwhile. Yeah, just yesterday, uh, a gal asked me to do a reading for her cat who is dying. Right. So she and she's a psychic medium. So she says, "Can you help me come to terms with this? Because I can't hardly deal with it." And so it works even as a prevention and a preparation as well. Has there ever been a time when somebody's come to you, Swami, and to ask you to connect with somebody on the other side? And the person on the other side has basically said, uh -uh, I don't want to talk to them. I don't want anything to do with them. <laughs> well, I yeah, have robbed that actually in multiple for in multiple reasons that that has come true. A friend really? of mine 
I, I was doing a reading for him. I got his grandparents, his other grandparents, and finally says to me, how come you didn't get my father? <laughs> and, and then I, I, I get a sense that there's a, 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 a spirit over here. I go, did your father not show up in your life? And he goes, yeah, he never showed up in my life. I said, well, he's standing over here telling me that. He goes, if I just showed up now, you wouldn't believe it was him. And it was like, wow. whoa. But on a sadder note, I've had a number of women who did not have very good relationships with their father. And they never even came through. And I only heard from other people that they were upset in the reading that their father didn't come through and apologize to them. He didn't come through at all. And uh, sometimes somebody would ask, well, what about my dad? I go, I'm sorry, he, he's, he's not apologizing. He's just... Yeah. So, yeah. I, met, I imagine it must be hard for you because I, I, I feel that you're a very empathic person hmm. and that, you know, you take the... You take the hearts of those who come to you for help. You 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 guard it, and you yeah. take care of them. But it must be, and I believe it's hard. I know it would be very hard for me to have a mother or father in front of me who's asking to be connected with a child on the other side. Yes. My grandparents said to me uh, that it was the hardest thing for them to lose their children meeting my parents my mother right. my mother's mother told me that and uh, i yeah so but when the when the kids come through and i'm what's called an evidential medium which means i have to give you evidence of something that happened between you and them that only you would know about and that way you have faith that it really is happening and and i also need that faith to know i'm connected i'm not just making stuff up right so when they start telling those stories, I had a gentleman and his wife, and I told them about their son in the motorcycle accident. And I said, but he's telling me that just as that truck was coming, God took him out of there. He never felt any pain. And that alone was a huge relief. And then he said, listen, if you just drive around that road where I lost my life, I'll be there with you, and you'll feel us together. And it just... It was such a beautiful moment for them. Swami, we've got to take our final break. Please stand by and explanation. If you'd like to contact the Swami, his website is orangecowboy.com. I'll be back as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon with yours truly, Rob McConnell, right here from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. back swami Tirth is our guest orangecowboy.com first of all uh swami thank you so much for joining us tonight great pleasure talking to you and meeting you sir same here rob it's, it's been a joy thanks for um 
I, there's so many questions I have for you, and yet we have about <laughs> nine minutes left. We'll have to have you back on, that's for sure. I'm sure love, you have many yeah. more stories to share with us. I'd be happy. It's great. Um, tell us about your animal whispering experiences. I'm. I, we own three dogs, okay. or we call them our three little girls. And one of the jobs that I had through the company that my wife and I own, Relmar McConnell Media Company, was the director of communications for the SBCA. Okay. So I have a love for animals that runs very deep. But you're a whisperer, the Swami animal whisperer. You Tell somebody us about asked that. Me, somebody asked me recently how that began, and I, I couldn't remember. But what I can tell you is that the, the uh, horses are, are the dearest to me for some reason. They, they come to me in dreams visually. Mm -hmm. Somebody said to me, my horse is uh, sneezing. Can you tell me what it's about? And one night I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw the horse with the sinus problems. Yeah. And I called the lady the next day. I said, there's something in the hay. And she goes, you know, that's right. I, I got some new hay. I have to go back to the better hay. And then here's the funny part. She called me a few weeks later. She says, my farrier is here and he's trying to put shoes on the back of the horse's feet and he won't let him. And he said, call Swami and figure out what's going on. I don't have all day to stand around. <laughs> so, so I said, do you, do you, uh, are you standing there by the horse? She says, yeah. I say, well, the horse told me that it's his front right hoof that's causing pain and he wants the farrier to look at that. She says, oh my God, he's lifting up his front right hoof. I love it. I just love it. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I wonder, what are the most talkative, if I can use that phrase, mm -hmm. animal that you deal with? I'd say it's the horse. The horse, eh? Yeah. And the dog is the least talkative because they're devoted. They, they're in service to you. So if mm -hmm. I say, what's the matter? He says, oh, don't worry about me. I, I'm here to serve Rob. I say, yeah, oh, but wow. if you're sick, you know, you're not serving Rob. He says, well, reluctantly, they start to talk to me. Yeah. They are so wonderful. Yeah. They are so truly wonderful. Okay. Now, first Swami here on our show in 33 years. Uh, first Swami whisperer for animals <laughs> ever. But RV psychic tours? <laughs> Tell me yeah. about this one. Boy, you know, we're this is this is the new age. This is the age of joy. But it, it, it yeah. we we have to make that decision because we're we're everything is coming out right now. And do yeah. you want to keep you want to keep these views? Do you want to keep these beliefs? And, and I had the opportunity to sell my house last year. And over about six months into the spring, I realized I don't know where I want to move, and why should I limit myself? So I got an RV and I living in it right now i'm in it right now wow and um and i have uh i want to travel to memphis and uh go to grace i'm called to graceland for the longest time i don't know why mm. and sun city and uh, i figure i swing by dollywood but then down to texas is where i feel called for now and um so yeah the rv psychic will be talking about the psychic things that are happening that i'm getting that uh, and then regular psychic tip i mean repair tips in, in the rv uh, places that i go you know went to a wonderful uh, car museum you know old time antique car museum and uh, so it's a little bit of a little mishmash of everything and a lot of humor lot so of we'll be able to say coming to a city near you yes that's right <laughs> One quick question for you, Swami, and then we have to say so long. Um, sure. Do you have any messages for me for me from the other side? Oh, okay. Well, let's take a look. See. Okay. So the first thing is that they're so heartfelt. The spirit is their hearts are swelling with gratitude for what you're doing for the world, ah. and it's like breakthrough. Like I see the your their hearts are swelling, breaking through our. Uh, through this so-called reality, 3D reality, mm -hmm. like the, the matrix. So what you're doing from your heart, breaking through this illusion, and they're making me see that you're making people see a reality 
that's uh, and they're they're in tears grateful for you you know i'm, I'm almost starting to i'm tearing up now uh -huh. to see them tear up so thank you is what they're saying thank you thank no, you it's thank you. it's i who thank you sir for coming on the show tonight and for sharing with us and um let our listeners know how they can find out more about you and where they can buy your books yeah they could get the books on amazon and uh, amazon.com amazon canada amazon france india wherever there's an amazon the books are available and uh orange cowboy i have courses in how to be a intuitive medical intuitive how wow. do you how to become a shaman energy healer and uh, how to practice the vedic astrology and this is another reason why we have to have you on you have so much more to share with us i love this rob i i, I love to help i love to be on like-minded places with like-minded people and you're about the same like-minded age i guess it looks like to me and so anytime seriously thank you for that and one more Thing I'd like you to do. What are you? What are your final thoughts tonight for the Exonation? What message would you like to leave with him, Swami? Okay, so this will be not me, but the channel. So, listeners of the Exonation, you are waking up. Thank you for waking up. You are the forebears of the new world. You plug in here for energy. You become the open channel continue if you're doubting go out and build the world if you don't see it it's because it's there for you to build build the pillars of light for this new age be the ones who show the world the joy that really exists if we choose that thank you all and keep listening to rob show <laughs> swami i want again i want to thank you so much for joining us safe driving safe travels Thanks, and sir. uh same with you. Good continued success and thank you, sir. exponentially success. Thank you so much, Swami. And we'll see you again soon. Very good, Rob. Lots of love and joy, joy, joy. Take care, Swami and Exo Nation. If you'd like to have more information on our Swami that we've had here this hour, Swami Tirtha, visit his website, orangecowboy.com. Now, I'll be back on the other side of this break at the top of the hour as we continue here in the Exxon, as this is the beginning of a new weekend. So wherever you are, wherever you're traveling, number one, take care of each other. We are each other's brother. Love your family. Give your kids a hug. Give your wife a hug. Tell them how important they are to you. And uh, keep listening and watching the Exxon TV show and radio show. And if you'd like to listen to the radio show, if wherever you are in your car, on the beach, uh, at the office, that'd be nice www.xzbn.net. We'll be back at the top of the hour with Lloyd Auerbach. Don't go away. <laughs> 